Uh, good morning uh, to all our uh, presenters from all different countries in the world uh, and to our spectators. Uh, we are still waiting two presenters, uh, Mark Sidal, Mark is coming, and uh, Tuba will be joining us soon. Uh, so I would like to start our session uh, by warm greetings from Turkey. Uh, passive house uh, notion, concept, uh, is regarded by many people in the world uh, still as uh, standards for houses and no wonder because of the name. Uh, today we specially uh, made such a program uh, and uh, we would like to uh, study different uh, building typologies from the world in order to uh, understand uh, that passive house standards can be built in all building typologies and uh, that Passive house standards are the only global uh, standards and prototype uh, for achieving zero energy buildings. Today, I have very distinguished guests, and I would like to uh, give the stage to each of them uh, in alphabetical order. Uh, so I will go start first with Portugal, uh, with Marcio Diaz. Marcio is the CEO of Builders Passive LDA, he has a Bachelor of Architecture degree from Moderna University and Master degree in Management of Architectural Projects from European University of Atlantico. He is FIDIC Certified Engineering Consultant, Certified Minergy Member, Passive House Tradesperson, and Certified Quality ISO 9001 Specialist. Stage is yours, Marcio. Uh, we cannot hear you. Can you open your mic, please? Hello everyone and hi everyone i'm going to show a house a passive house is my real house too and uh, i want to show is possible made passive house with the traditional materials all the materials is concrete and masonry and i'm going to start to show the 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 the, the powerpoint to understand it's possible only to make a correction with the thermal bridge and put the ventilation and then you can make a passive house no matter is light steel frame is wood frame is brick is concrete you can make a passive house i'm going to start to share the the powerpoint the passive house is near to the ocean it is a warm climate and they have some difficult because it's little i only have 72 square meters by floor and total meters by floor and you can see it's a normal house i only made the, the roof in cathedral because to give the sensation of more space is nothing more than then and and the next uh, you go see i start this is the plans you have two floors a kitchen one saloon and another saloon uh, the kitchen is stay in the north of the house and in the north there is no lots of windows all the windows is to the south part then in the next you go see how to start the foundation and the elevations of the house it's a normal house it's the family house they have three rooms and the kitchen about two three bathrooms and it's a house for live then please you go see this is the foundation this this is only a, a normal membrane of macadam only to the humidity don't go to the slab then in the next you go see the insulation of the slab it's 10 centimeters of sf 500 and then let's pass to the next and you see it's normal steel they start to put the the slab rebars and you go see step by step it's a normal construction with the normal things now they finish the rebars then they're going to put the concrete like you see there is the concrete now and then the next you go see it's the same step by step this is the garage i made the same of the house because the heating pump is inside and more quality you have in the storage you stay with the heating pump more quality you have in 
in the heating pump and all the system. This is the, the connection. Only I have two, three balconies because the sunshine only to protect the windows. I have in the, behind this south and this part is near to the entrance door. Like you see, you see the normal concrete, only you see these connections and you see the brick. Like I say, you can make the passive house no matter the material. It's only put in PHPP and go step by step and made everything like this is the roof. And you can pass the next, please. This is their thickness from the window. It's only put the windows and made the air thickness. You can see the steps is, is not to make the passive house like uh, some science from the space. The passive house you can build. If you go in here, you have a zero foam frame only to put the windows. Only to put the windows, only to put the windows like that. Because you it's it's you can made you can made only you have to, to cut is all the thermal bridge and put all the things together and made the things nicely. Made passive houses, I say every time, if you stay in the field and step by step, every worker can make a passive house, but you need to help. Sometimes this is the roof is normal insulation. Like you see, it's 20 centimeters from zero form and the construction, like you see, it's normal. Can you pass to the next, please? Then you see from these pictures, you see this is the local material, no matter how, no matter where you can find. You can find this material around the world. Then you have the screed to finish the roof. And then the roof is a membrane of waterproofing. Is painting, is, is MTC by Sika. And then if you go to the next, please, you see how the roof is made. Is only to stay like that. Please, can you pass the other? This is the plumbing. I work with this part of plumbing with Gabarit, the, the silent, because I don't need some noise of water inside the house and like that. And all the pipes pass by the ceiling. And in the next, you see uh, the headaches. Like you see, you can see the garage. They have the same treatment of the house. And you see all the house. They start to put the headaches. And the next uh, PowerPoint, you can see again, all the system. It's a normal system. You can find no matter the brand. You will have lots of the brands in the world. All, I think all the brands are good now and they have good quality. And this is a traditional house with the normal materials near and you gonna this is inside because the house is very little i need to put the ventilation and the machine inside on the living room and i create this furniture to put the machine inside and to show even in a little space it's possible put the ventilation because the ventilation is a big problem there, this is a big problem in all the house, not in the passive house, but the ventilation is a big problem because all the people put ethics, even in the renovation and change all the windows and something like that. And then they don't put the ventilation. Now the problems is start. And like you see is only the normal steps. This is the box from the ventilation and all the pipes from the ventilation. And you see, it's a normal house. Even you see the floor, the concrete, and all these things. Now they have the heating floor. And you see, it's, it's the same in zero foam. It's a normal house when the, the, you have plastering, you have all these things. And this is how is to show I want to put these pictures to show it's possible made a passive house with the normal materials. You can make only you need it's the numbers. 
from the PHPP. If you have numbers, even you can make a passive house. Now you can change, please. This is the house, the finish of, of the house. So like you see, I have furniture, a different kitchen. I have, I made some, some things, some experience in the windows to have natural light, all the natural light in every place, like you see. Uh, because uh, you need to, to change a little of now it's the construction. The, there is lots of materials and no one's care. There is more problems in the construction than the beginning. Now you see the door blower test. You see the numbers. You see the numbers. I, I made the risk to work with traditional materials to make some air thickness with plastering because I want to show it's possible made with plastering. And if you see the graphic, you see it's correct because no one can change the graphic. If, if someone changes, you have a problem with the machine or some problem with the window or something like that. And it's, it's possible. It's possible to make. Now you can pass, please. And you have the PHPP, all the calculation from the PHPP. And can you pass, please? And now you have the certificate from the passive house. And this is show is possible made the passive house in the local materials. The only thing I have certificate passive house is the ventilation. If you tell me something, now you put the windows, yes. I don't want to calculate one by one because there are different inch and something like that. But, but it's possible made better and made passive house. And I want to say thank you to someone who made passive house in Iraq because this is for us a big lesson. Very big, very big. And thank you very much. If you need any question, it's okay. I think you enjoy. Uh, thank you very much, dear Marcio. This was very uh, inspiring. And also, it is very important uh, that you mentioned that uh, it's not a rocket science. It's about yes. numbers. It's about uh, placing everything, uh, all the quality material uh, at the right time, at the right position. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. I will, we will continue with the presentations and we will uh, receive all the questions uh, at okay. the end of the session. So I would like to uh, move from Portugal uh, up to United Kingdom uh, to a big island. Uh, so uh, we will be um, discussing a, a project uh, in a different climate zone. Uh, Mark Sidal is the Director of Architecture and Research at LEAP. Uh, he is one of the pioneers that brought the Passive House standard to the United Kingdom. He is an award-winning architect, researcher, educator, and author with a growing international reputation. Mark has been at the forefront of sustainable low energy and low carbon design for over 15 years. Through LEAP, his practice, Mark creates low energy, low carbon homes, and communities that are sensitive to the defining characteristics of the local area and reflect high standards of architecture. Please, Mark. Thank you very much. Thank you um, for that uh, uh, introduction. Uh, can you see my screen okay? Yes, it's okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, um, the project that I'm presenting is Larch Corner, and this uh, won the UK uh, Passive House Awards for small projects uh, this year. Uh, I thought it'd be useful to show some of the uh, thinking that's gone into the project and some of the, should we say, differences that it has to perhaps regular buildings and how um, some aspects of passive house um, don't need to be daunting um, because uh, you can go on, you know, you can do things in quite some, some quite different ways. Uh, so first of all, uh, the site itself um, has been considered uh, from an environmental stance as well. Uh, so the site enhances biodiversity by introducing wildflower meadows, edible landscapes, native tree planting um, with some discrete permeable parking and a seed and roof that you can see on top of the house. So uh, you know, addressing biodiversity is a key part of the, the thinking of the project as a whole. Um, 
getting in a bit into a bit more detail about the house itself, uh, then it's not just that passive house has been a key consideration. All upfront emissions have carbon emissions have also been considered. So we've sought to try and reduce those uh, emissions from the construction process uh, to a very high degree as well. The windows have been uh, positioned in such a way that uh, all you know, the views are framed by the windows. And uh, we've used a design for disassembly strategy that uh, basically screws the whole building together um, because the, the, the building's built from a uh, cross laminated timber, uh, which uh, came uh, from uh, Europe. Um, and yeah, you know, the it's a, it's a single story dwelling. It, that's it's a disadvantageous form, but this was a limitation because of the planning conditions associated with the project. What you can see here, uh, starting from the upper right, is the sawtooth profile, which address, addresses the curvilinear um, side of the street. And uh, we can see the uh, timber cladding, the photovoltaics on the roof. Down below, again, you see um, uh, the gargoyles uh, that uh, throw the, root, the rainwater off the roof. We use it because of a thick wall. Um, uh, uh, you're using those deep walls, we're using the reveals to offer shading. Uh, so, so this is helping to um, uh, shade the building in the summer uh, so that, um, you know, the, to avoid the risk of overheating. Internally, you can see that the spaces are well lit, uh, so there's good standards of natural daylight. And, um, you know, the, the, with the, even the dining table was made from cross laminated uh, timber uh, in terms of using offcuts from the construction process. So we've really made some lot of efforts to reduce waste in that construction process as well. Um, but you know, the, there's a large living dining area, and then there's uh, you know, which is open plan, and then we've got the more cellular rooms that we tend to expect in a house in terms of bedrooms, etc. Within the hallway, uh, the, with, there's uh, plenty of storage. And uh, there's a playful light, you know, kind of lighting scenario here with the LED lights. And, the, and in the office area, which is this largest photo, uh, you can also see that there's a fall down bed that's incorporated into there. So that can be used as, um, when uh, uh, the client has uh, his grandchildren come to stay and the likes. And he can stay at this end of the house while his uh, guests have the, you know, the run of the rest of the house. Uh, in terms of energy performance, obviously that's sort of interest when we start to put our passive house uh, hats on. Then um, one of the first you know, kind of uh, most observational things is that the blower door test uh, is uh, it was the third. It's the third most airtight house in the world, and the air leakage would fit on the square of a one penny coin. Now, just for reference, a one penny coin is about the size of a one euro. Um, so with you know, it's uh, two hundred and forty four times more airtight draft proof than required by UK building regulations and um, significantly more airtight than required by uh, passive house as well. Um, in terms of uh, addressing the other passive house cr criteria, the space heating load is less than 10 watts per meter square and the space heating demand per annum is less than 14 kilowatt hours. Um, I helped to prepare a peer reviewed paper with Wolfgang Feist um, the, uh, who developed the passive house standard along with other members of the passive house institute and Dr. David Johnson from Leeds Beckett University. And we looked at 2000 uh, passive house homes. And you can see along the bottom is the calculated the demand and on the vertical axes is the uh, delivered uh, performance in practice. And what we can see is that passive house criteria are uh, being achieved. Um, I've just plotted on a large corner onto this graph and you can see that within reasons of measurement error, it's performing uh, as we'd expect variations in temp uh, annual te uh, te seasonal temperatures and things mean that there can be some fluctuations and uh, the likes in practice. Um, and we've also got to bear in mind that there's errors uh, plus or minus in terms of measurement processes as well. In terms of summer comforts, overheating uh, is a key consideration uh, or avoiding over you know, providing summer comfort, I should say, is a key consideration in passive house design. I took some very pessimistic views in terms of the amount of opening uh, of windows to keep the building cool uh, because of concerns about harvest flies and other things because we're in a quite a rural location. And PHPP suggested that we might exceed 25 degrees Celsius or perhaps 9% of the year. But uh, in practice, what we found was it exceeded uh, 25 degrees Celsius for 5% of the year. And the reason for that is that 
Um, some of these, you know, the windows have been open more frequently. And what we're finding in the UK is general good practice is that in PHPP, we can enter a uh, nighttime ventilation rate of 0 .0, uh, 0.1 air changes um, per hour per Kelvin. And that, that's got a good representation of how much windows will be used. So you, here you can see the monitoring uh, in practice. You know, I, I put data loggers in for 12 months, saw what happened and uh, plotted the results here. So we can see the hours of the year um, ordered by lowest temperatures to highest temperature. And we can see that uh, the exceedance of 25 degrees Celsius is taking place for about 5% of the year. And when we adjust PHPP to point, that 0 0.1 uh, air changes per Kelvin, then there's good correlation between a PHPP model and uh, the exceedance that was uh, seen in practice. So we've got you know, high, you know, high confidence that PHPP works at calculating and predicting in use energy performance as well as um, uh, summer comfort and overheating risks, which is going to be important as we move. Uh, as our climate continues to change. We also looked at the actual energy use uh, in terms of photovoltaics, because the, cap, the house includes um, a large photovoltaic array. And what we determined was that 1.8 tonnes of carbon emissions were displaced relative to the UK grid. Um, we, but because of the winter gap, you know, there's, you know, those colder seasons, we also found that with the drawing from the national grid, uh, there was uh, 0.7 tonnes worth of carbon emissions that occurred. And these can't really be avoided when you've got a dirty grid system in place. Uh, so, you know, and then looking at it in more detail, we found that 60% uh, of the energy generated was exported to the grid and 40% was used within the house uh, or uh, to charge electric vehicles. In terms of indoor air quality, we mentioned uh, temperatures and, the, and humidities. So we can use humidity as a proxy uh, as a way of describing uh, the uh, uh, indoor air quality. And what we can see is that relative humidity does not exceed 70% um, uh, for significant periods. The, the rooms that did it uh, was, you know, it was a bedroom. Um, uh, for only a short, relatively short period of the year. So it remains, it's a very good, healthy environment, keeping within that band between 60, you know, 40 and 60% the majority of the time. You'll see that it does fall into an acceptable territory between 30 and 40% uh, relative humidity. Sorry, it's got the Celsius um, uh, markers on there. Um, and um, uh, that was that's because the house is occupied by one person. Uh, so we've got very little moisture generation. In terms of um, other monitoring that we did, the house incorporates uh, an air source heat pump um, and it was selected because it was up to, uh, you know, with using uh, carbon dioxide uh, gas uh, as a, the refrigerant because that's optimised for domestic hot water because when you've got a passive house, domestic hot water demand tends to be higher than the space heating demand. In practice, what we found was that um, it's not quite uh, perform the way that we expected because there's lower occupancy than expected um, and also there's less uh, domestic hot water use so that's had an impact on the seasonal performance and also there was a bit of rodent damage to the external pipe work um, which had to be repaired so that, that no doubt contributed a little bit um, to that performance gap. We calculated the upfront carbon uh, emissions and so these are the various different uh, components here and what was surprising was just how much photovoltaics contributed to the overall carbon emissions, you know, just as, you know, almost as much as uh, what, what went into a concrete floor slab. Insulation materials, in this particular case, uh, that we used wood fibre insulation and foam insulation materials underneath the floor slab to create a, a raft scenario. And overall, the photovoltaics accounted for 23% of those uh, carbon upfront carbon emissions and 69 tonnes uh, uh, in total. It, but it, of course, it's not just that we made these emissions. Uh, there is carbon sequestered, uh, trapped uh, here within the you know, within the cross laminated timber structure, and also within the insulation and cladding systems. Now, it's not to say that these you can play a numbers game and zero these things off because you know, the emissions that happened, uh, the, you know, the, the carbon that was captured, uh, the 69 tonnes that were captured over time happened in the past, whereas the upfront emissions happened very recently. So therefore, that you know, we can't play a numbers game. The planet wouldn't see it in that fashion. So we can't really call it net zero in terms of upfront carbon. But we've done, you know, we've done some good things for the environment by trapping it, trapping emissions uh, uh, carbon into the building, providing we don't go and um, Burn the, you know, the, the uh, byproducts of the building at the end of the building's life. 
Uh, when we compare the uh, large corner to a masonry build with external uh, passive house with external wall insulation, we see, can see that we reduced carbon emissions by around about 38%. Uh, but next time we could improve upon uh, this by uh, basically building a two-storey development rather than one, but we were limited in this particular case because of planning constraints. Um, so in terms of what was allowed to be built on, on, on this particular site, also, we would use engineered I-beams, timber, uh, timber I-beams, rather than cross-laminated timber, because we, we would use less timber, and that's a good thing, because we can then build more houses using less timber. And we would, we would use a tool called pH ribbon, as opposed to having to calculate all of these uh, this data from scratch. Um, uh, pH ribbon is available from the ACB, and is a great tool, and cuts a lot of corners. Um, it was, the house was also the UK's first installation of blown wood fibre insulation. We use duct uh, finish standards for duct cleanliness because passive house requires clean ducts, but how clean is clean? And um, that's where they came in. The ACB water standards were used to help inform the water efficiency, the approach to water efficiency, uh, so that we were not um, using excess water. Uh, domestic, we used a domestic sprinkler system, which meant that we didn't need to use toxic paints uh, on the walls for you know, on the timber uh, uh, walls. Um, so, and instead we used uh, low toxicity VOC paints throughout the house. Uh, in terms of lessons learned, um, in this particular case, you know, what we found was that world-class uh, standards of air tightness, far beyond what's expected from passive house, was relatively straightforward. And this comes through having a good design and well-trained craftspeople on site that can execute the work in an appropriate way. Um, so it's simply a case of having good dil you know, due diligence um, in terms of other aspects of the project, we found that getting environmental performance declarations is time consuming when we're trying to calculate embodied carbon, which is why the pH ribbon uh, tool is very useful as a plug-in for PHPP. And we also observed, as noted, that renewables contribute significantly to the upfront carbon emissions, which isn't to say that they're bad, but it's a thing to recognise. Um, and then also getting in-use energy data can be tricky. Uh, you need a very cooperative client or uh, useful tools. So in summary, um, this is Mick Woolley here, and this is his final closing quote. Um, you know, I love Larch Corner. It gives me a wonderfully quiet, calm and comfortable home that's extremely economical to run. And I really appreciate the superb daylight. So if that's not a testament to what Passive House can deliver, then um, I really don't know what is. If you're interested in finding out more about the project, uh, then you could go to um, uh, passivehousesecrets.co.uk where I've got a documentary video about the project and uh, I'm occasionally running webinars about the project to go into a lot more detail than I've got time to go into today. Um, so feel free to um, subscribe uh, there and then I'll let you know when I'm running the next webinar. And there's, there's other um, documentaries on that website about Passive House projects that you might find useful. So that's uh, that's the presentation concluded if, and I'm happy to answer questions um, in due course. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mark, for this uh, wonderful house. Uh, I'm sure you will have many questions, uh, but people need to digest all the information you have uh, provided us because it's a very well advanced uh, building and work, of course, because you integrate the, uh, try to integrate the uh, zero carbon idea also, uh, and data over there can be quite difficult to uh, uh, arrive, of course, uh, in our countries. And now uh, I would like to move on uh, from United Kingdom uh, to our neighbor uh, countries. Uh, first, I would like to invite uh, Stefanos uh, and I'd like to give a brief information about him. Uh, Stefanos is, uh, Palanzas is the president of the board of Hellenic Passive House Institute. He graduated from the German School of Athens and studied civil engineering at the National Technical University of Athens where he specialized in the timescale and financial planning of major projects. For nearly 20 years, he is involved in residential building projects in which he prioritized the very low energy consumption and the implementation of environmental friendly technologies. Mr. Palanza is founder and president of the Hellenic Passive House Institute, trainer on the Passive House Design Education, passive, uh, certified Passive House Designer and accredited building certifier. Please, Stefanos, the stage is yours. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's very nice to see known faces. 
Hi, Tukba. Hi, Svetlin, that I see now. Mark was also here. Hi, Yasmin. Thanks for the invitation once again. So let me share my screen. So I was I was asked a few months ago to 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 show to to present uh, new certified examples in Greece. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the certif the certificates yet, and the main reason for that is uh, that uh, we have a lot of delays uh, because of COVID nineteen, and we have also sometimes no access to the. Uh, to the job sites, to the buildings. So most of the projects that I will see, I will show you today uh, are one step, one final step before uh, uh, the certification. We will do this week or next week, some final uh, uh, blood or test, and then is everything there uh, in order to get the certificate. But I decided to show them, even if they are not, 100% certified because it's only a typical matter. It's not something that there is a problem with the certification. First of all, for those who don't know us, we are at Hellenic Passive House Institute. We preserve the integrity of the Passive House standard and methodology. We promote the Passive House principles to the industry and government. We undertake research and development on Passive House standards in Greece and in the wider area. And of course, we promote, educate, facilitate, and develop a strong identity, understanding, and demand for the Passive House concept. We are affiliate of the International Passive House Association since March 2012. We have done more than 50 uh, Passive House basic courses, uh, not only in Greece, but in the wider area. More than 30 certified Passive House designer and tradesperson courses. Uh, we have at the moment more than 50 Passive House projects running uh, in Greece and in other countries. We have nine projects certified in, in Greece, Germany, and Italy. We have as comp we also uh, function now as component assessors, and we have uh, helped uh, to get, of course, together with the with PHI to certify 12 window systems in Greece and in Turkey. We also run at the moment three European programs and the Broadshow, Rhino and Outfit. Uh, our staff, maybe a few years ago, you know only me. Now we are four people in the Institute and we will grow more. We will go very, very quickly to six. Uh, Sophia, Alexandra and Dimitris are uh, all certified passive house designers, two of them civil engineer, civil engineers and uh, Dimitris uh, building physicists. And of course, we have our network. We have localized all the equipment that we can have in order to uh, promote the Passive House Standard. We have the PHPP in Greek. We have all courses and all material and training material in Greek and all the certification procedures for local uh, partners are in, is in Greek. So we start uh, showing you uh, these particular projects all over the country. I'm very happy to say that this is the first year that we act more as certifiers than as designers. And this is very interesting and very important for us because other people started to create, to design passive houses in Greece, and this is, and we support them. So this is very, very good for us. Uh, this first uh, example is in, in Paro, on the island of Paros two summer villas. Uh, and as you see, uh, the main problem there is, is the main problem there is uh, the cooling demand and not the heating demand. And also another problem is the high humidity uh, that we have all in all islands in, in, in the GM. Uh, imagine that this uh, um, uh, passive house Calculation has, has been done with uh, double glazing windows only and with only eight centimeters of external insulation in the walls. It's a little bit more in the, uh, on the roof. Another interesting uh, project that is finished already and is only, we have done also the blood or test and is okay. And uh, the only thing is now to, for, for the designer to upload all the documents in the database is another uh, project, another single family house in Corfu on the other side of Greece. 
uh, in this uh, project, we have, as you see, almost no uh, heating demand. This is something that happens very often in, in, uh, in uh, projects in, in Corfu. Corfu has one of the mildest, uh, uh, one of the mildest uh, climate in the country. It's similar to what uh, uh, our friend from, from Portugal show us, where they have mo most of, they have very low demands in heating and cooling. So this happens here. This, what happens here is the same. This, is, this, this project is a prefabricated wooden house. Uh, and this is also interesting because it's the second one and the second one passive house in Greece, which is wooden prefabricated and the first one to be uh, certified. This is a very interesting project. The third one on an island, this is close to Athens in Egina. Uh, and this, as you see, is a light steel construction. Uh, uh, we are now, we started this project two weeks ago and we are almost ready. Uh, I will go on Monday to make the blotter test. So you, this project will be ready in almost a month, at least the, the, the building envelope. Uh, it's a very interesting construction and, and it has also a very interesting uh, implementation. You see here how we have made this uh, outer uh, air tightness in, in, in the whole envelope. And then you see the glass rock. Uh, and after that, it will be the external insulation, 10 centimeters of normal insulation. The windows are PVC windows. They are already installed. I don't have any photo. I will have photos on Monday. This is also a very interesting uh, uh, project that it, it haven't started. It hasn't started again. We are, we are, uh, one week before we get the building permission. And this is important also because it is the first commercial multifamily building in, in, in Athens, which was designed from scratch from passive house designers. So it is from the beginning as a passive house building designed. And this is why you see this very low uh, heating demand, although it is in Athens. Uh, and this is uh, achieved with only 10 centimeters of insulation uh, in the in most of the building and with all these big glazing openings that you see. Of course, this is south, but uh, it was not so uh, easy uh, to to achieve it. But I believe it will be very very important. Now the next step is to find the the good marketing in order to to sell these uh, uh, apartments. There are eight apartments in this building. Uh, as I told you, it is commercial. And so it is the first attempt that we do in, in, in Athens and in Greece to, to sell passive houses. And uh, it will be very interesting, uh, a very interesting project. This is finished. Uh, also the, the blood or test was made and is perfect. It's 0 0.6, although it, this is a renovation the, the the uh, blotter test was uh, 0.58. So we, will, we must uh, correct it here in blotter test. Uh, this is in Nafplion, the first capital of Greece. And this is not a graphic, what you see, it's a real picture. So it's, it's really a beauty, this house. Uh, it's two apartments, one small apartment on top and the other one uh, in the ground floor. And uh, very, very interesting, a perfect indoor quality. Indoor air quality, I was last weekend in this house. It's really perfect. And I, 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 if I remember well, there was a presentation last year by Panagiotis and Pavlos here in, in, in Zero Built Forum. And now we are in the final step of the, uh, of the certification. And this is one of the newest uh, projects that uh, we have done here in Athens. Uh, a very modern, as you see, uh, building, something else. What I show you now, you, you see, you understand that this is a big proof that you can build anything in any kind of shape for passive houses. This is a very modern building. This is also a steel, a heavy steel construction. Uh, we will do the last, uh, last blood or test in coming uh, Wednesday, and then we will proceed with the certification. 
This is, a, this is the first uh, pa uh, passive house premium residential that we will build here in, in, in Athens. This is also another uh, renovation in, in Kozani, in the north of Greece, in very uh, difficult uh, climate. And as you see, we are almost on top of the demand. Was also a very interesting project. Was very interesting the shading design uh, that you see. And it, is, it plays a very important role in, in the cooling demand, which is very uh, low. And uh, the customer is already there, spent the, the spent this hot summer in the building without any use of uh, cooling, as he told us. Uh, we are waiting there also for the last uh, blood or test in order to proceed with the certification. But it was, again, a matter of access due to COVID-19. And this is also an undergoing uh, project in Patras, in the south of Greece. Again, a single family house. Uh, conventional construction. We are now uh, finishing, the, as you see, the, the external insulation, and we will do also the, blood, the first blow order test uh, in, in two weeks. Of course, in this last year, we have done at least two uh, certifications, but this, both these certifications were uh, abroad, not in Greece. The first one was in, in Munich, Germany, uh, and it is this multifamily house in Stadtnatur, RIM. Uh, we are very proud for this project because, uh, first of all, one of the designers was a Greek uh, student of ours, let's say one, one of, the, of my children, let's say, uh, Margarita Lemoni, who worked in, in Valentin Architectura and was mainly our partner in this certification. And secondly, because the, uh, the building got the, the Passive House Award for 2021 Best Residential Building. And this one was in Italy. It's again a multifamily house in Putignano with Piero Russo architect. This was also a good collaboration very quickly. And uh, uh, this is also a beautiful house. I have visited it and it is really a very good example of multifamily buildings in the south of Italy. So for Mediterranean climate. Uh, we have also just started three uh, interesting public uh, projects, which is very important also for us because it's the first time that we do public buildings in Greece for, with the passive house concept. The first one you see on the left is a very old, as you see, more than 200 years old building, which will be renovated to the Enerfit standard. And we will go there with inside insulation because we are not allowed here in this area to put any external insulation. Uh, and we also will need to find the solution here with this particular windows, the two, two windows here, where we are not allowed to do anything ju but just to repair it. So we are uh, thinking to, to propose uh, single glazing, vacuum glazing for these particular two windows in order to, uh, to hold the, the wooden construction of the frame. The second one is the, the, the known kindergarten uh, in Tavros. Dimitris, I believe, will have a presentation later today on that. Uh, this project, which was the result of the last year's competition, student competition, will start this year. We have found the, the financing now, and it will start as soon as possible. And we have also something else that it is, we are also very happy for that. Uh, because of an earthquake last year in central Greece, and two, uh, one school there was uh, demolished, and we will design it from the beginning, from scratch, with our team, uh, together with two kindergartens as the first passive house educational buildings in Greece. Uh, building for certification in general is, as you know, quality assured, and this is why we uh, try to certify every single building that is created, every single passive house building that is created in our area. Uh, this is why we support all people that uh, uh, try to, 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 to make passive houses in Greece and in, in the wider area. Uh, this is why we motivate uh, everyone 
to do this and to uh, start with certification. This some sometimes we also give the certification for free if there is a very interesting project for us. Advantages for the owner, you know that it is cert uh, certainty to achieve the targets. Uh, of course, he's increasing the property value. Maybe he can find uh, subsidy programs for financing. Uh, me as the certifier are always helping uh, and spot energy saving measures in order to uh, save construction costs. And of course, if you have a plug in front of your house, it is visible to the public that you have a different house, you have a better building. There are also, as you know, advantages for the designers because of prevention of errors due to thorough external checking of planning. And of course, you can be recognized as a certified passive house designer if you uh, apply with a certified passive house building. We as a Hellenic Passive House Institute, all, always with mentoring from the P, from PHI in Germany, we, we uh, offer consulting support and certification to everyone who wants to uh, achieve the Passive House standard in any project. If you need more information about us, you can find us uh, in this data. Uh, and of course, you can get also information from PassiveHouse.com uh, from the German Passive House Institute. Thank you very much. And I'm ready for questions. Thank you very much, Stephanos, for this uh, great presentation. Uh, so very quickly there, uh, you showed us uh, different uh, samples. Uh, that uh, we can uh, do passive houses, not only in new buildings, both in uh, retrofit and also in uh, cultural heritage buildings, which is very, very important for uh, countries like us, where we have uh, hundreds uh, of years of history uh, behind. And also I uh, took notice that uh, you are willing to uh, give free certification for very interesting projects. So let me uh, underline this uh, sentence once again. Uh, and now I would like to uh, pass on uh, to another neighbor of ours, uh, and to the uh, land where uh, my great grandmother was born. Uh, I'm passing over to Bulgaria now. Uh, Svetlin Dobrevsky, uh, General Manager of Passive House Bulgaria and Certifier, has a master's degree in ecology and master's degree in finance. He has been working in the construction sector for 28 years. In 2001, he founded Eurodome 2001, which trades with materials for drywall construction. In 2010, he founded Passive House Bulgaria, which since then has been conducting trainings and exams according to the Passive House standards. In 2017, he became a licensed certifier of passive houses. He is currently working on about 15 projects worldwide. Please, Svetlin, stage is yours. So uh, I'll share with you my experience, my experience as a designer, builder, and occupant of my passive house. Uh, let me share my screen. You see my screen now? Uh, not yet, we are waiting for it. Now it came. It's okay. It's okay. That's perfect. So uh, I'm going to tell you what motivated us to build the passive house. Our decision was to make a small house which uh, can show the advantages of the passive house standard. Our main goal uh, was to use fresh air for cooling and heating. Here we used an interesting approach uh, which expands the borders of the functional criteria for heating and cooling load of the passive house standard. And at the end of this uh, presentation, I'll show you the final conclusions uh, we made from our experience. In Bulgaria, there is a widespread belief that uh, passive houses are very expensive and uncomfortable and are completely unsuitable for the climatic conditions in our country. It's strange where uh, the people have such uh, an experience from, because in Bulgaria, there were only two certified passive house buildings 
uh, before we build the third one. So I'm sure that uh, with the appearance of more, exa more examples of Pascal in Bulgaria, uh, people's opinion will, uh, will change and uh, passive buildings will become the basic way of design and construction in Bulgaria. Convinced about our correct approach uh, toward the future, uh, we came to the decision to build a certified passive house. The aim of the project was to show the advantages of the passive house concept in climate zones with the temperature range above 50 kelvins as in Bulgaria, and uh, to prove the cost effectiveness of uh, passive buildings. In 2016, uh, we built the first certified passive house in Sofia. For the location of the site, uh, we chose the capital of Bulgaria because of its extremely high summer temperatures, uh, design temperature 35 degrees Celsius, combined with uh, low winter temperatures, design temperature minus 16 degrees. You can see uh, on the slide the average temperature on 24th of January uh, 2016 was uh, minus 20 degrees Celsius and uh, on 14th of July it was uh, 37 degrees Celsius. In order to take all advantages of the passive house standard, we decided to use uh, heating and cooling through the delivery of fresh air. The main reason to take this decision uh, was to use uh, uh, the fresh air for heating, uh, that uh, uh, using the fresh air for heating saves uh, uh, up to 80% compared to the radiators or floor heating. And from the other side, using the fresh air for cooling has significant benefits as, as well. First, the airflow is very low. And second, the noise levels and the risk of drafts are significantly reduced. The main challenges were low winter temperatures combined with the high summer temperatures, the high requirements for seismic resistance of the buildings specified in uh, current local regulations, the small area of the plot, not permitting a, a, a footprint of more than 100 uh, square meters, mastering also the beautiful view in all directions, which is available over six meters from the ground. Achieving high comfort and modern and functional design with maximum cost effectiveness were the key factors when determining solutions. We used the design pH and the PHPP9 as planning tool from the very beginning. And I can assure you that uh, this has saved us a lot of time and money. Because of the small plot, we decided to make a three-story house the high legal requirements uh, for earthquakes in Bulgaria and the large terrace on the third floor considerably aggravated the, the ratio between the thermal envelope area and the TFA, which became more than four to one. The entire op opaque building envelope was implemented with EPS and XPS insulation with thickness between 20 to 30 centimeters. Uh, by which uh, optimum U values were reached from 0 0.09 to 0 0.14 watt per square meter Kelvin uh, for all the opaque uh, building envelopes, uh, components. So uh, we carefully studied, analyzed and optimized all the thermal bridges by making them simple for implementation. The final result from this approach uh, was savings uh, of 0.02 watts per running meter Kelvin or 1.45 kilowatt kilo hours per square meter per year. We paid a special attention to the air tightness of the building during the design and during the construction phase. Nevertheless, in the planning phase, uh, we adopted the certification value for the air change rate of 0.6 per hour. In the final blower door test, we achieved an excellent result uh, for the air change rate of 0.23 per hour. For the transfer and building envelope, we used only certified components. Uh, for the frame, we chose the system S91. It is produced by uh, the Greek company Alumil, which has a serious deficiency. The profile high is uh, 18 centimeters. However, uh, with uh, the help of careful design, uh, it resulted in an, in an advantage. 
we installed a triple glazing uh, panel of uh, the company Guardian. Share, uh, a shading has a crucial role in the cooling balance in hot climates during summer and in the heating balance in cold climates during uh, winter. It was therefore uh, paid uh, much attention to the de details that uh, were designed to provide maximum shading on the transparent part of the building envelope during summer, and at the same time, not to stop the penetration of sunlight during winter months. The big profile high uh, of the window allowed uh, uh, to turn into negative installation thermal bridges and to increase also the solar gains using this country on 30 degrees uh, reveal uh, that led to a reduction in heating demand of two kilowatt hours per square meter per year. After describing all the actions above, it was obvious that a high quality heat recovery unit should be used also. We chose the best certified heat recovery unit in the range with 92% heat recovery efficiency, Comfort 200 of Zenda. And uh, for the site, we developed special passive uh, transfer openings with silencers inside uh, that allow a transfer of up to 30 or 70 cubic meters without penetration of noise and light into the living rooms. The last challenge uh, that had to be solved was uh, heating and cooling systems. The result in the PHPP have shown that uh, the heating and cooling demand had covered the certification criteria, but uh, the heating and cooling loads were still too high for having the possibility for heating and cooling through the delivery of fresh air. It was a problem because it seemed that uh, one of the main advantages of the passive house concept could not be used. In such cases, uh, two approaches are usually used. Uh, first one, uh, improving the thermal envelope of the building, uh, which raises the cost of the building. Or the second one, the insertion of heating and cooling system used in other buildings, which raises the cost of the building even more. It was obvious that both of the approaches were unacceptable because there would uh, be a huge increase of the additional costs due to building service uh, building services equipment. Here you can see a standard mechanical ventilation system with heat recovery. Uh, the outside air colored in blue comes from the outside and passes through the heat recovery unit and the fresh air colored in green goes into the living area. The extract air, colored in yellow, it is taken from the service rooms and goes back into the heat recovery unit with, uh, where its heat is taken and transferred to the outside air. Everything is perfect, but uh, with a cooling load of 12 watts per square meter, uh, the air volume is not enough and can't transfer the power we need for heating and cooling. The solution came from the proper raised question what is needed to be able to transfer enough power? More air volume. A different approach was taken under estimation at that time. We decided to add an air to air heat pump to the ventilation system with a bigger air volume capacity and to provide an additional volume of the air to air heat pump by adding another branch for recirculation, which is colored in red. We added to the ventilation system another branch of air ducts for recirculation uh, of the inside air. And in order to keep down the speed of the fresh air, we increased the diameter of the fresh air pipes. The recirculation air is taken from the stairs and corridors in order not to circulate uh, the community and others accumulated in the service rooms. We also added a mechanical shutter valve uh, to ensure the proper system operation. Uh, when the air to air heat pump doesn't run, it is closed and where the heat pump runs, it is opened. And the design of all the mechanical ventilation system was made in a 3D model uh, of the building in order uh, to avoid intersections of the pipes and the structural elements. After all the integrated uh, 
planning approach towards energy efficiency, the main goal was achieved and all the criteria of the passive house standard were covered uh, despite the severe weather conditions. The fitting demand of uh, the passive house was 12 times less compared to a calculated heating demand of the same house built according to the legislation norms in Bulgaria. We have carefully analyzed the economic efficiency during the phases of design and construction, the additional investment cost to achieve the passive house standard despite the severe condition in, uh, conditions in our case is up to 7.5% construction phase, I mean. And as you can see in the results of uh, the worksheet uh, PH Echo from PHPP9, the payback period of the investment uh, with the no residual value of the components is less than uh, nine years. On the graph, you can see the measured electrical consumption of the whole building uh, uh, for a period of four years. In this graph, uh, the data are summarized and as you can see from uh, the graph, the heating and cooling of the building consume less energy than the energy for hot and cold water. But let's uh, also see uh, the final expression of these uh, percentages. Uh, the total bill for one year is less than 670 euro, which makes less than 60 euro per month for heating, for cooling, uh, cold, hot water, lightning, and household electricity. It means everything. And all this with very high comfort in win during winter and summer. I think it's uh, impressive. As a conclusion, uh, we can say that uh, building a passive house in climate zones uh, with cold winter and hot summer is not only possible, but extremely favorable, uh, taking into account the economic profitability and excellent comfort achieved in passive houses by reducing the negative impact on the environment. The passive house standard is the first and the only building standard that combines uh, personal interest and desires of the individual and the public necessity for environmental protection. So, Thank you. Uh, dear Svetlin, uh, I think also it's a very impressive uh, house. Uh, the uh, figures you gave are very interesting, of course, only 7.5% uh, more expensive uh, according to a, a usual building uh, is very, very good. Uh, and also the return on investment uh, looks very, very good. And thank you so much. And now I would like to come uh, to Turkey uh, and uh, to a, a case study uh, from my hometown, Ankara, capital of Turkey. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, our uh, final guest today. Uh, dear Tuba Salman Gürcan uh, is the uh, founding chair and board member of SEPEM and uh, chair of Passive House Maine. Uh, she is an interior architect and environmental designer with a master's degree in sustainability and design. She is the first certified passive house designer of Turkey. Tuba worked on a wide range of passive house and nearly zero energy building projects, including various building typologies of houses, municipality buildings, offices, and training and innovation centers. In 2019, together with her family, she moved to United States, mine, and uh, she continues to be at the forefront of international sustainable construction industry. Please, Tuba, the stage is yours. Uh, can you open your mic, please? Teşekkürler. I would like to thank everyone for attending this organization.
Kısa bir süre daha bekleyelim. No, it's okay. Yeah, I wanted to deliver this presentation in Turkish because we do a project related to uh, Turkey. Uh, if you listen to the morning presentation, uh, you probably heard of three certification models of passive house structures, one for the new buildings, the other one for improving the current uh, structure uh, stock, building stock, and the third one is to uh, ensure that we can create low energy buildings. And this example, uh, NRFIT, will be a, a passive uh, renovation, passive renovation example. We completed it in Ankara. And considering countries with uh, current building stock, I think these countries should focus on this certification we believe that as the passive house work because we cannot demolish everything and uh, start doing things from scratch. For sustainable development, we can focus on this certification. And actually, this is not like a rocket science. Uh, here, what we uh, do involves very small steps. Considering majority of them uh, do not have enough insulation. We have to uh, first ensure that, and it changes, of course, from uh, city to city. A passive house in Izmir cannot have the same specifics with a passive house in Azure. And the windows need to be improved. And here the products should be, uh, actually the windows should be cared well. Uh, we should be able to use double glass also, we're talking about uh, airability and ventilation. Uh, and ventilation here is very important for in terms of our health. And COVID-19 showed it uh, very well. And here we are talking about heating and uh, actually cooling elements. So the Passive house concept I will present to you for Turkey is a really good example. And of course, there are there were problematic or challenging sites. And because it's the first, we had uh, very bitter experiences. This is the before and uh, this is the after photo. And actually, this is a cooperative structure. Uh, this is one of the dark realities of Turkey cooperatives. Please do not get me wrong when I say that. Uh, okay, they have been left as they were uh, actually uh, left to decay. And Ankara is unfortunately rich with those cooperative buildings. Actually, this is uh, one of those buildings which was uh, inert and uh, even this project did not receive any uh, settlement permit uh, back then, residence permit back then. So when we wanted to uh, change the facade and other uh, dimensions, even the municipality uh, showed resistance. We couldn't explain the passive house standard. They understood it to a certain extent, but they said you cannot change the window openings. You cannot create an opening here, an opening there. So actually we have a, a mentality uh, block, uh, and that's not the problem in the United States, for example. We need more window opening for us. I should be able to do that. That's the first, uh, of course, condition of you know, passive houses. There is such a difference, but how did that difference come into being? First planning, we had a 200, 20 uh, square meter uh, residential project, which is not very big. 
and we had a, a basement plant as the uh, office area of the Passive House Association, and the upper uh, floors would be uh, spared for living purposes. Passive houses have this characteristic, uh, the best or conducive structure type uh, is represented by houses. Why? Because it's a living unit, day and night, and the consumption of people inside actually have positive impacts on our calculations. That's why converting a living uh, house into a passive house would be easier, I have to put it, in terms of calculations. The top two floors will be used for living purposes, as I told you. The basement floor would be used for office purposes, and there's a different entrance for access to working area in the basement floor. Now, uh, the uh, facade you see is the southern one. We were lucky there as the building had the living spaces in the southern uh, facade. Uh, and here there were, it's one of, it was one of the few lucky uh, houses in this cooperative project as uh, living spaces faced north in the other ones. Uh, when you have kitchens and living rooms facing north, you encounter some other problems in terms of passive house application. Here we started with the foundational uh, wall insulation in the basement, and the best move was to prepare the outside uh, using EPS insulation component. And here uh, we thought of not only in terms of heat insulation, but also water insulation. So insulation is important as a whole package. We applied a drainage membrane uh, practice and completed this uh, heating insulation. And as we actually peeled the walls of the house, it started to look uglier. As you also see on the photos, this was completed in 2017. So when you have a retrospective look uh, to four or five years, you still feel like uh, cleaning up the mess. We used 25 five centimeter EPS for facade insulation. And this material was the most practical solution for us. Honestly, there are discussions about its application for certain projects. And uh, there might be issues in terms of application, but I still believe it was the right choice and we were able to, uh, luckily we were able to apply that. We had an issue about the dough uh, and in the previous ones, we had a 30 centimeter uh, domestically produced dough, uh, which wouldn't actually uh, cause any problems for us. And that was a huge plus in our case. After completing the insulation, we uh, started to focus on the windows. Uh, we spent much time in the work site and the, uh, here the most critical aspect in the renovation uh, stage is that you need to be more present in the, on, on site because it's a closed box. Improving the current building requires you to focus on every attention compared to a building uh, created from scratch. We had a long waiting period for the windows, winter conditions, seasons changed, but as the building uh, actually started to appear, we had this difference. You see here the spring and the trees blossoming. Uh, it actually, one of the uh, images I uh, am very uh, fond of and here we try to uh, figure out issues like water insula insulation. And that is an example we applied to the uh, floor in the basement. And generally there was this humidity issue in the buildings next door, but we prevented that from uh, happening. And we uh, had the windows uh, arrive and they meet the passive house standards. 
There is this European company from which we procure in Turkey and the glasses were domestically produced and we are proud of it. We believe that they are really quality products meeting the standards across the world. In the application of the windows, the issue that required the biggest attention was the uh, it was about the impermeability or uh, tightness uh, tapes. And here we also look at the uh, connection between the floor and the uh, wall, in addition to applying the ceiling strip. And here, lower door tests benefited from this uh, attention. Actually, lower door tests helps us check the uh, air uh, leakage in passive houses. Generally, we conduct this test in the out uh, door, uh, door unit. Also, we have heat recovery mechanic ventilation system which we procured from Europe, but through uh, the support of a domestic company. Actually, heat recovery mechanic ventilation system uh, requires specific designing for the uh, interior of the passive houses. And here we uh, actually had fake entries or ensure that it is part of the light pool in the living room through the help of interior architectures because uh, the clean air must reach all living spaces. And we also uh, withdraw air from kitchens and uh, bathrooms in passive houses. That's why they, are, they play a critical role. And we insulated, we ensured air tightness, we uh, applied the ventilation system together with the channels. And then now we uh, came to the stage where we dealt with heating and cooling. There's this air based heat pump and this is the, the this is the outside unit. Also, there is this small unit as small as combi boiler. People ask a lot about it. When I say heat pump, they think of a huge device entering the air house in Turkey. Unfortunately, uh, but but uh, just the opposite. It is a, a device with this size of a combi boiler. So there is not a huge change for the user. And we have. Uh, hot water and solar system integrated to our air pump. And in variable weather conditions, hot water is procured through this system. In winter conditions, the heat pump uh, provided us with water. But I can say that even in November, I mean, you may not find it uh, not very credible, uh, if you're not from a technical background, but our solar system would help us actually meet uh, hot water even in November. So solar systems doesn't have to be just considered for cities like Antalya, considering Turkey's seasons. And here we had a photovoltaic panel system integrated to the system, it has a it has a two kilowatt size. It's a small size, but I think we wanted to set the right example for everyone observing this house, because solar energy systems will be integrated more and more moving forward. When designing a house or a building, we must definitely uh, integrate the photovoltaic. Uh, integration and here we had a green roof application. We couldn't add its own roof, but 
uh, we had this green roof application on top of the garage. I think green uh, roof as part of the fight with climate change should be used more and more in uh, Turkey and uh, rooftops of the buildings matter significantly. We should actually turn these areas into green and support them biologically as much as uh, possible. Okay, we completed and everything looked great. Uh, the ugly appearance disappeared. And here there's this external unit, which is the uh, heat pump, as I stated earlier. This is the northern facade facet of the of the project. Can you wrap up Tuba, dear Tuba? Sure. I will show you just a few pictures. Okay. This is the entrance of the basement. And yes, this is the uh, interior photos. And actually, you can warm the entire house by just turning on this stove. We did try not to separate the spaces from each other much. And that the heat created by that stove reached even the uh, top floors, the top floor. And here you see the kitchen. This is uh, an image from the basement working area. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have questions uh, or if you would like to communicate, you can uh, reach me with my email address. Thank you. by uh, and uh, I would like to uh, take the questions and uh, give some time for us to answer them. Uh, so we have uh, one question. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, this to everyone uh, who would like to answer can uh, take the uh, opportunity, please. Uh, and it's from Önder Nalband. And he's asking, is it a must using ground source heat pump in PHI concept? In fact, we saw different uh, samples. So please, uh, could you uh, give an answer? There's, well, there's no, you know, passive house is neutral here, should we say. You can use whichever heating system is most cost-effective and appropriate on your project. Um, so ground source heat pumps are an option, but so are air source heat pumps or even gas condensing boilers in some scenarios. But we, from an environmental perspective, we'd prefer not to use them these days. Uh, Marcio, can you open your mic, please? I think I think it's the best work with heating pump because you can make the the hot water and you can make the heating floor. It's it's my opinion, but like Mark say, you can make the passive house no matter how how you if you want air conditioned, you can make and normally it's it's see uh, the investment, you know and see how much square meter is the house. The passive house is not, like the people say, why are you changing the passive house? If you don't have balconies, you don't have connect. If you go made a normal house, you have to put the ethics in the same way, okay? And the end of the day, you, I think passive house is made, what I can say, a building with careful. It's only like that. You put the same materials. You have the same kitchen. You have the same bathrooms. You have the same living room. Only you take care about the construction. Maybe and instead of using uh, golden taps, uh, it's better to use better quality insulation and have a healthy house. <laughs> but you don't need to change anything. It's put in the right place. Exactly. Very really critical, but actually we are not using the, the same materials. We are using high performance materials, you know, that's a critical point. Uh, so the building market uh, needs to develop more and more in high performance way. That's what we need to do more positive house buildings. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I would like to... I, if yes, you allow me, Yasmin. Sure. <laughs> to, say one, to say something about this. I think that if you ask passive house people, what should I use for heating? It's a wrong question. 
Yeah. It's totally wrong. Yeah. It's it's uh, it's unfair. Let's say. <laughs> it's, uh, so we don't care about the heating system. We care about the lower of the of the heating demand. So uh, it's of course we use high performance uh, things, but you know that in many countries, in my also, we are, all the the, the 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 energy people are divided in two in two groups in two big groups. One who say that you have to improve your envelope. And the others that you say you have to improve only the systems. So we passive house people, we are on the one side. So uh, we, we do care about the systems, but this is not the priority. The priority is to have a very high performance envelope and then building systems are... But at the end game, of the day, you need the game, building systems. A game for children like, like Tukba's children. So that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Uh, I have a, a yes, please. <laughs> yeah, just to pick up on um, that last comment, really, that uh, in terms of that kind of focus on reducing overall demand, we are thinking very much about the demand, you know, the supply side, mm -hmm. because what we know is that um, renewable energy sources tend to be more expensive um, and that heating is a phenomenally, it's a very large proportion of our energy use so what we're doing is by reducing the demand the energy demand we're providing more cost effective low energy homes that are affordable for all people and i think that this is a critical thing that we are not on one side of a fence passive house is actually joining these things together you know, with a holistic future focused um, perspective Sure. <laughs> this bad. is why, at the end, we need a small scale uh, heating supply, you know, and also cooling supply. Then this means less investment on the heating source and the uh, cooling source. That's really critical. Reducing the demands through the high performance building fabric is a must. Uh, this is why we need more engineers and architects um, specialized in designing these buildings. Anyone who would like to comment on this? Okay, so uh, I would like to ask a question. Uh, Mark uh, made a comment uh, in his presentation that the uh, photovoltaic panels uh, use quite a bit uh, carbon footprint. So uh, if uh, European Union is uh, intending uh, that the Europe, uh, European continent is going to be carbon-free continent by 2050, and we would like to proceed with uh, passive, house, passive House Plus and Passive House Premium. Uh, where do you see uh, the uh, trend will go? Are we going to use some other kind of uh, perhaps uh, renewable energy sources or uh, you expect that we will have more developments with the technology in uh, photovoltaic panels? This would be an interesting con um, conversation maybe. I mean, I'm not going to try and guess about the future of photovoltaic panels and how they will be improved and how making by making them better, perhaps they, we don't need as large a panel and perhaps the embodied carbon could reduce, maybe. I don't know. I'm not going to make those kind of guesses. What I'm going to reflect upon is the fact that, that at the moment, many of these panels are manufactured in country. Yeah, it's how they're manufactured and the embodied carbon within that from those environments, where, yeah, from those places, so China or wherever it may be. Um, and I think that as we make, as we decarbonize our electricity, then the carbon emissions associated with manufacturing will also reduce. I think that's one thing that we can recognize. Um, and then the other one is that uh, it's a case, you know, I don't actually believe that these net zero gains um, are necessarily useful things. As I tried to highlight in my presentation, things don't always add up to zero. You know, you, you're sequestering carbon in, in a building structure does not equal zero to offset your upfront carbon emissions because of time <laughs> means that these things are physically separated. Um, we, you know, so we've got to just recognize that we are on a journey towards mitigating and reducing emissions. And that um, I think that we also need to be mindful of um, practical maintenance issues. My clients, 
particularly wanted to have photovoltaics. I did not advocate that. Not because I don't believe in passive house and the, the, the levels that uh, it has, but because it's one whereby this is additional uh, components that need to require maintenance. And in the future, not every homeowner, we know that in the UK, people don't maintain their heating system. Adding more technologies to a building, does that make it more likely to be maintained? I would advocate decentralized uh, community-wide uh, uh, generation. You know, we know that we can do this in a much more cost-effective way. Uh, an example that I would give is in Marstel in Denmark, where they have 100,000 square meters of solar thermal panels. Underneath the field, they have a subterranean and swimming pool that they pump all of the heat to the houses for three and a half euro cents per kilowatt hour. Meanwhile, if you put that same panel on your roof, it will cost you 27 cents per kilowatt hour. Which one is smart? <laughs> you know, it's, exactly. the, it's the more cost effective exactly. approach. Yeah, really. Well, you need the, you need the beginning is start to reduce the square meters from the house. This is a big problem. Like oh. in Portugal, everyone wants 300 square meters. And the you have <laughs> this big too. problem. You know, uh, you after, have after a crisis like in Greece, you won't need uh, 300 square meters. You know, meters. one of the guys from this concept is Lloyd you. Walter. And one day Lloyd Walter, the architect Lloyd Walter from Canada, told me. In the beginning, I build a big house and I pay my money. And now I pay to devise the house to my children. And there are three families inside this house. They told me one day, like this, then this is crazy. If you're going to see, you have dressings with 20 square meters, master rooms with uh, 25, 35 square meters. This is crazy. This is now you need you need to put the house warm and the heating and all these things you don't need in the people know they want the slide windows and the big windows and then they want air thickness why it's impossible uh, if you allow me mark mark is 100 percent right but uh, have uh, having seen the new german phpp 10 i have to tell you that most of the questions and the problematic is there, uh, let's say, solved in many cases. And we will see lovely things in, in, in PHPP 10. And we also will see lovely things, I see at least, uh, lovely things in district PH. So what you said, calculation on the district and none on the uh, one single uh, building. All this is very important, but still at the, at the end, Building physics remains the same. So for us, the target is always the same to make a very good envelope, group of envelopes, which means a very sustainable city and sustainable buildings and life for everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Thank you so much. So we are uh, looking forward to uh, PHPP 10 then. Uh, and uh, I would like to uh, ask a final uh, question to everyone again. Uh, this session was about houses. Uh, passive uh, house, uh, standard built houses. And the next sessions are going to be about different building typologies. And although you are experts and although you have experiences in different building typologies, so uh, it, this is quite a naive question, in fact. So uh, what, do you, uh, what is your feelings about and what is your experience about uh, designing and implementing a house uh, and a, a school, or if you had the chance, a hospital or any kind of uh, public building uh, with uh, passive house standards uh, because of the different uh, calculations and different numbers you have to use. <laughs> First, uh, Tuba, let's start with Tuba and then Mark. And Suetlin is uh, listening very quietly, so we would like to hear his experience also, please. First, Tuba, please. Ladies. As you know, in Turkey, we started with a, a non-domestic example in Gaziantep, you know, a government building, um, which we were lucky. We showed an example, we made it. But since the beginning, uh, I was aiming to start go further with the housing project because I think housing projects are easy to achieve, passive house standard. But it is for sure we need uh, more and more and more uh, schools, hospitals, all types of uh, passive houses, you know. I, now in, in Maine, for example, we are talking, we are talking that this is 
not the feature. This is the normal of a uh, building type now, you know. Forget about the certificates, forget about the details, you know. This is how everyone should build now, you know. So, um, but it's for sure easy uh, to achieve, I think, passive standard in housing projects, but um, it's, it's the must that uh, we should have passive house schools. Uh, now, any new uh, school project needs to consider passive house standard or hospitals, you know, for health wise, it, it is a need. And offices also critic, is it really critic, you know, health wise, it's not just about energy performance, also the, the, um, the health, healthy environment, creating a healthy environment for the um, habitats, you know, it's important. Thank you so much. And Mark, what do you think about well, it? I'm asking you to suggest you speak to Stefanos first, and then I'll pick up. <laughs> I would like to uh, listen to Svetin first, and then go to Stefanos, and then to you, and finally to Marcia, if it's possible. Okay. So, uh, I don't think the, there's a big uh, difference uh, if the building is residential or non-residential. There are other things that uh, we have to take care of. So uh, it's uh, you say that uh, it's really easy to make a single family house, a passive house. It's, I don't think uh, it's uh, like that. Uh, it depends on, uh, it's much easier to make a school or a hospital a passive house because uh, uh, the ratio between the building candle and the treated floor area are different. That's why uh, when we speak about buildings, uh, energy efficiency of these uh, whole buildings, uh, okay, that's the main uh, difficulty that we can re uh, we can meet. Uh, the smaller is the building, it's uh, uh, it's uh, more difficult to make it uh, to reach the passive house standard. Yeah, there are some things uh, which are uh, for non-residential usage when we've got, uh, there are some things that abbreviate, of course, uh, um, the final results, uh, but in total, it's not uh, impossible. It's really very, I think, uh, no problem to, to make every kind of a building uh, as a passive house. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, Stefanos. Um, in, in my opinion, speaking about, when we speak about volume, you understand that it's more important to, 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 to create residential buildings and to renovate residential buildings because there are more than 80% of the buildings, of the total buildings. So, this is the first point. The second point is, of course, public buildings and mainly ed educational public buildings have more impact to the society. So there the problem is, there the, 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 the design of a passive house is not mainly cutting the demand or cutting the CO2 emissions, is increasing the awareness of the society. So this is my opinion why, and, and I saw this, even in in a, in, a, in an example last week in in, in Nafplion, we run now uh, the NZ Broadshow, a, a European program about awareness in passive in passive house and NZ uh, through Greece, and we go into schools for the first time, and we go into uh, uh, elementary schools. So the first one, young young children, ten years old or eight years old, you cannot imagine how quick how quick they understand the physics. And you cannot imagine next day coming together with the parents to the games, what the parents heard during last night of the, from, from the children. It's, it's crazy. So that's why, why I, saw, I, saw, I said before, Yasmin, that we do also certification for free, for example, for schools or something like that, because it is really a good, a very good chance to change things in countries like mine, at least, where information is not coming so so quickly as in other countries. It's and same I believe everywhere, Stefan. It's yeah, same the everywhere. same everywhere. It's really important. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So that's why I think, I don't know technically if it is easier or, or I don't believe, I believe in, in passive house project, in every project you have several problems to, 
so every every project has his own personality, let's say, and you have not you cannot say, make copy paste and so on. So uh, I, I, that's why I really like Passive House because it's not a, a kind of uh, let's say everyday job. It's, it's about a, challenge. It's, <laughs> it's it's a, it's an adventure. Every day every day it's an adventure. So uh, I don't believe it's technically better or easier to make public uh, non-residential buildings, but it is more important to make some examples. Yeah. Thank you so much, Stefanos. And to Mark, what would you? Well, I, 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 that. I echo that uh, comment there that uh, public buildings are there for teaching um, uh, and they speak to the people so that they can understand um, what is important and what the priorities are for this generation and the next generation. Um, I, so I think that there's a huge um, public statement made uh, in retrofitting existing buildings where new buildings, new schools and etc. are required, then they should also have these same kind of aspirations of minimising impact and Passive House is a good way of doing that. Um, I thought that I'd contribute to this by saying that there are, in the UK at least, a growing number of non-domestic buildings that are being designed and built with no additional capital cost or very little capital additional capital cost um, because the key, but the key thing is having experienced certified passive house designers and certifiers on board to help guide the process so that they can so that these buildings can be um, constructed in a cost effective way and because you're that way you're able to use the experience of these professionals to create these uh, buildings and that means you avoid the costly mistakes so you yes know, it's, it's not just about the buildings uh, on with more so than with, with larger buildings it's about having the experienced people involved um because it's not just about the envelope anymore think about the internal gains the electrical energy use inside becomes critical to thinking about um ach you know, achieving passive house standards for last 30 seconds if marcio would like to add no, this want, uh, for me the passive house start in the school you know <laughs> For me, the passive house start in the school is to explain to the kids how to use the house. And now there is some countries start to do things like that. You know, go to, to the schools and even sometimes in Switzerland, Minergy have something like that and explain, you don't use this room. You don't need to warm, put this room warm. Is to, to explain how to use the house. Even if you made a passive house, you don't know how to use the house they don't gonna work then you have another thing it's the island of eating in the cities this is another problem you know you made a nice house and you made asphalt or macadam turn to the house and and or you made something in the slab in the black collar or something like that if you go see there is some studies with a calculation of this from the sunshine i'm not I have a personal opinion, and if you go see the graphic from California, there is a big study and a graphic about the the, the solar part is not my my cup of tea, but I have my my own opinion. You know, you don't can go to the church in the morning, you don't can deal after lunch. You know, it's a little like that. It's it's I might think like that, and it's my opinion and it's personal opinion. I think you made a great job, yeah. And I think all the countries need to see more and to change mentalities in the house and how to live, you know, from the next generation. It's not for us now. It's from the next generation and the others and the other. You know, check the resource. Even the water is another resource. You need to think how to, to, to change the mentality. And it's like that. And thank you very much for your work. And for all, I... thank you so much. Uh, I would have loved to speak uh, with all of you for one more hour, but I believe the technical team is soon going to uh, close the session. So uh, again, uh, one more time, thank you so much for accepting our invitation and uh, taking part today and to Passive House Pets. Uh, I had to lock mine out of the room, otherwise she would be everywhere around the screen. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, have a great day and thank you so much for sharing thank your you, experiences and knowledge. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been thank an you. honor. Thank you all.